So race-based trauma is really the stress and uh, difficulty that people experience as a result of racism and systemic oppression, oftentimes uh, in the wider society, but it's largely seen also in the workplace. So we just heard from three people who are a part of a class action lawsuit against the federal government. They claim that due to discrimination, they have not been able to progress in their workplaces. How does that impact the well-being of someone when they feel stuck? Yeah, so when someone feels stuck and they're unable to move forward, oftentimes they internalize that struggle. They start to feel as though there's something wrong with them that they are somehow internally broken, that they are unable to uh, do the job well. Sometimes they see their colleagues move move ahead of them and advance uh, further along, and they start to feel a lot of anxiety, this this deep-seated feeling of inadequacy, and it often impacts self-esteem. People feel a sense of uh, low self-worth. And it really impacts their ability to have meaningful relationships with uh, loved ones and peers. And it can even further uh, hamper their development at work. So what are some of the ways people try to cope with this reality? Do they blame, you said they blame themselves sometimes. Do they try to Mm -hmm. change their behavior? Or there's a a term called code switching as well, uh, where you Mm -hmm. change the way that you are perceived and the language that you use in order to fit in. That's right, that's right. Uh, Code switching is seen very, very often. It's sort of this coping mechanism that people use where they they, uh, put aside who they really are in order to fit into what they deem to be the expected norm, particularly at work. Uh, Oftentimes people uh, put aside their culture, they put aside their own, even their own personal values in order to fit in at work, in order to help them advance. Uh, People sometimes will, uh, you know, no longer engage with others of their own race or of their own culture in order to move forward. Uh, And this can have really devastating consequences. People end up feeling sometimes as though they're even betraying themselves in order to move forward. Uh, Sometimes people will try to cope by um, engaging in uh, really devastating behaviors, uh, you know, uh, alcohol, drugs, uh, different kinds of narcotics, um, you know, poor relationships. They find uh, ways to almost excuse the way that they're behaving at work. And oftentimes this can really push other people away and people end up being quite alone and, and very, very miserable. Could it be the extreme of contemplating suicide? That's what we heard from one of the plaintiffs, Letitia, that she has heard uh, anecdotally from some Indigenous uh, employees in the government that have contemplated suicide because they just feel like they are being attacked by racism within the organization. Most definitely. And I think for our um, Indigenous uh, friends and, and neighbors, Uh, It can be a bit of a double-edged sword where they are being discriminated against at work. And oftentimes, people might uh, try to fit in so much at work that they put aside their own cultural and spiritual values and then feeling a sense of deep self-hatred because they've done that. And that can result in uh, significant feelings of uh, worthlessness, of helplessness, of hopelessness, and eventually suicidal thoughts. Mm. How can employers help this uh, issue besides obviously treating people fairly? How else can employers step in? Employers can really take a look at what their organization looks like, right? Many organizations will say, well, we're diverse, look at our staff. But what tends to happen is that this diversity per se you know, it's multifaceted at the ground level, the customer service level or the entry level. And as you go further up in the organization, it it looks like what I call the pale pyramid, where the further up in the organization you go, uh, there are less people and there are less people of color, right? There's less diversity. And so organizations really need to take a look at does their diversity reflect the entire organization or really just at ground level? The other thing that they need to look at is if we do have diversity at the, you know, in the upper tier of our organization, is that only relegated to, uh, you know, gender diversity? 
right? Oftentimes people will say, well, we're diverse, but what that means is that uh, our leaders uh, incorporate uh, white women. And so we need to look at what diversity means across the whole spectrum of, of life. The other thing that people need to look at is, you know, when they are engaging in things like uh, employee uh, evaluations, we need to ask the question, you know, how can we help you move forward, right? Instead of just relegating that to a specific uh, group of people in the workplace, uh, to your, your point of fairness, but also to, you know, who has access to training, right? Who is working overtime? Who has access to mentorship? in the workplace. And when uh, people are being hired for these uh, leadership positions, instead of just looking at the technical skills, instead of just looking at can they produce, we also need to be looking at uh, how do they um, incorporate uh, equity and equality as they do the work? What has your track record been up to this point? Because if we hire people for whom diversity is a key component, then we won't have to spend thousands of dollars training the entire organization because it will trickle down, right? So these are some things that organizations need to really be aware of. 